Welcome, welcome, welcome to Planning Phase Syndicate, episode 66. Now, this is pod racing. We are going to be reviewing the Dutch, Roma, and Nova World's Qualifier Tournament list tonight. We're going to do it a little differently, kind of like what we did the other week. We're not going to just go over all the top lists. We're going to go over the top four lists, and then my selection of what I thought was interesting for all the other lists available to us. With that being said, we're also going to be having a conversation about some of the new stuff that's coming up for the Coruscant pack and the Battle of Yarvan, Yarvan, which will drive everyone else, Yavin pack that did not um, release. Uh, we didn't get to cover last week. JJ tried to slip them in at the end, but I wanted to have an actual uh, little bit more discussion about it. If you're joining us from 312 Squadron, thank you all so much for the raid. And thank you, Nick, for uh, sending everybody over here. Uh, we are a weekly podcast uh, that we air every 9, 9 p.m. Eastern every night on Sunday nights. And then during the week, we stream random games, um, depending on what we have going on. With that being said, why don't I bring in my co-host with the mostest tonight? Maybe, maybe we'll bring him in. I think we're going to bring him in. All right. Welcome to the show, <laughs> JJ. Looks like you have gotten most of your moving done. Yes, last week yep. you were hustling to get onto the show. Uh, today, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, after several trips to our storage unit, and uh, <laughs> we finally got a lot of the stuff packed, and it's amazing how much stuff you gather over ten years of living in one place, and then need to uh, immediately store. <laughs> yeah, isn't that crazy? And it's like something they don't ever prepare you for, right? Like you're not prepared nope. for mm -hmm. this. And I'll tell you, like. I moved from a house. It was still like only a 1300 square foot house, but I moved from a 1300 square foot house down to a thousand square foot house. Right. But I had a, a unfinished basement. Well, I literally have a wall in front of me of all my video games and DVDs. I mean, we've spent three to four years just purging some of that stuff. Just crazy. Yeah. And then the worst part of it is like you're you, you you're in a rush to get everything all packed, and then I'm starting to go through like the bags and stuff that I had, you know, like rush to pack, and then I'm like looking at this stuff, and I'm like, why the hell did I spend all this time packing this trash that I need to throw out immediately? <laughs> then I just toss it, and I'm like, that's just wasted time. Like, man, yeah. So if you were one of the lucky ones that got to play one of the world qualifiers this weekend, congratulations. Uh, nobody seemed to want to take Boba, Ema, and Kanan to, to victory this weekend, it seems. Crispy had to take his list that he knows is going to be nerfed. He knows this list is going to be nerfed. So he had to run this list, I swear to God, one last time. Um, and congrats to him for taking Nova down this weekend. But I don't want to talk right away about any of that. I want let's, let's talk a little bit. Um, we're going to talk about the spoilers, but I have an in important announcement. If you are in the Michigan area and you want to go to a tournament, we have a tournament coming up um, here. Did I grab the wrong screen capture? Uh, I have it somewhere here, folks. It's here somewhere. I don't know where it is. I believe you. Don't worry. It's here. I know it is. There we go. We'll put it over my face. We are holding a Michigan GT x-wing championship with custom mandalorian prize kits which i believe i'm not 100 percent sure but i believe there's only one other kit because you can't see my hands moving but there's only one other kit in existence that's in america right now so all of these custom prizes are something that has only been done once before in another a group michigan group so if you don't have all these prizes uh come join us and you can get this the prize support um Beyond the kit is essentially dollars that they're going to give us to spend on, on on prizes from their vendors, gift certificates, X-Wing packs, different ships like that. And essentially, if the, the idea is going to be is me and Ken are going to kind of determine how we're going to break all this up, but we're not going to top load it. We're going to try to get everybody some cool prizes. So the cost of the tournament is 40 bucks. Um, I know it sounds a little steep because there's not a world's invite on the line, but there is no con entrance to come into. And typically we give back 50 to 80% of all costs of your ticket in prize support in some way, shape, or form. So if you'd like to join us, uh, there's a live link. You can send me a message or you can see it right in our Discord. Um, and we will be able to get that out to you and you can join us. I think we still have room for at least 10, if not 11, 10 to 20, 10 to 15 more people we have room for. 
Um, and we could kind of tweak our gap a little bit. The big surprise that we have, right, is if I can hit 30 people at this tournament, I have commissioned two PIM miniatures paint jobs, one for Darth Vader Defender, which I bet will get nerfed here, <laughs> and nobody will ever get to play their special custom PIM miniature Vader. And then the second one is a A-Wing Ahsoka, and it's going to be an A-Wing that's going to be painted like her Laku. That's, I think that's how you say that, but basically like her headdress. And the whole thing, and it, I haven't seen any any of the pictures. I told him to surprise me. I trust his artistic judgment well over mine <laughs> any day of the week. Um, but I, I want the side cannons to be like her white lightsabers on the edges. Like, oh, that, that would be cool. Just, that, that would be tilt. <laughs> well, you can message him and give him your ideas if you would like. AJ. But either which way. If we hit 30 people signed up, I'm happily going to just give those away, like to the top two people that will place in the tournament. So whoever wins, winner and runner up, 100%, I will just give those away as uh, special bonuses. But we have to have to hit that 30 be, for me to be able to recoup my costs uh, completely. Otherwise, we'll be having another Michigan tournament to get to uh, based on those as a theme prize. Um, and then we'll be doing that uh, here in November or February, depending on where we want to go so all right anyway i was excited about that how was your weekend jj good good just uh just spent uh, most of the weekend uh just uh just going through all the stuff here trying to get settled down here uh watching the nova championship as it was progressing uh and really enjoyed a lot of the games that were on this weekend and uh and yeah just just really happy to see some uh some regular faces from my old local here shout out to bearded squadron uh, the guys showed up and, uh, and it looks like you guys did well, um, this, this weekend. Yeah. And I apologize. I actually was planning on going and had everything set. And then, um, I forgot I ended up having a ROM sign concert that I've been holding to tickets for, for three years since the pandemic. So I was not going to give those up. Um, that was, there was no way I was giving those up. So we, we actually got to see ROM sign. We got to go eat at Kuma's Corner, which is like a metal theme bar. So if anybody listens to the show, I'm big into metal. Um, that's probably my favorite genre of music. Um, minus electronic music which and punk music, which kind of comes in second and third. But I love metal music. And and Rammstein always puts on a great, a great, great show. So that was fun. We had a lot of fun. We got stuck in traffic um, trying to get into the venue in Chicago at Soldier Field. And for an hour and a half, we literally sat in bumper to bumper traffic and we walked into the show two minutes before they went on. <laughs> um, so I had enough time to buy a shirt, grab a soda and sit down. Um, yeah, crazy. So, yeah. Also, as a reminder, Crate Cup, if you live in the uh, Carolinas area and you want to go to Crate Cup, I don't know. I don't think they closed signups yet. Have they, JJ? Signups are still nope, open, I believe. All. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So if you want to get a team of three together and go battle it out in Crate Cup, uh, again, it's one I would love to go to, but uh, a little bit far and I couldn't get three people that wants to uh, wanted to do that. It's like a 13 hour drive for me and nobody yeah. wanted to. Nobody wants to fly with me. So I guess uh we are not, I am not going that, but JJ is going to go represent planning phase syndicate. Uh, and, and he's been prepping quite a bit, uh, with lists that we will not mention. Um, even though he will probably <laughs> mention them at some point. So, all right. Anyway, why don't we talk spoilers? I feel spoilers are fun, right? That yes, seems like fun absolutely. to me. And I'm excited because, um, I'm not as excited about these two, but I'm a little bit excited. Um, about these two tie fight or tie if not tie whispers my god tie interceptors and i say that because like the big thing for me is interceptors have, have to some extent been kind of neutral they have not shown up at all very much um in competitive play and i would love for interceptors to go down in cost and i think if we can even with these standardized loadouts i think if we can get some of these in at a decent cost they will be very beneficial to play um in standard personally yeah. so jj why don't you take sigma five yeah sigma five here uh in the tie interceptor comes with the ability after you perform an attack that hits you may spend a non-recurring charge on your card which is uh they have two of them to perform an evade action um also comes with sensitive controls uh, being able to do a red boost or barrel roll during the system phase uh it comes equipped with a card that we have not seen since x-wing 1.0 uh sensor jammer 
which reads, while defending, if there's a friendly lock on the attacker, you may change one of the attacker's hit results to a uh, to a focus result. Uh, the difference between this one and the 1.0 version is that you did not need a target lock on the attacker 1.0, and this one you do. Um, uh, and I think it's like a it's like a reverse juke. Um, now, just keep in mind that this has the same timing window um, as. Um, so the timing window for this would be if you, uh, when you're defending, uh, the defender modifies their dice first. Um, so if they uh, spend the focus to change your um, to a focus into a hit, sensor general, uh, assuming that you meet the requirements, would then kick in uh, changing one of those uh, hit results back into a focus. And then the other um, the other upgrade on here is elusive, which allows you to uh, reroll a defense. Uh, for a charge there um so definitely really interesting to see that upgrade come back here um i think this is going to pair well with that other interceptor pilot that gets a target lock during the system phase um and, and that really helps uh set up this particular uh interceptor to be successful this is going to be like stapled on uh, as we make to that interceptor i think it's sigma seven if i'm not mistaken yeah i like this um i was i was going to ask i was like what ship is going to give the damn target lock right <laughs> yeah. Or hey, hey, Vader. Away. Yeah, Vader there or you. or that other interceptor. Yeah. Yep. And I I like I I like that. And yeah. Oh man, can you imagine? Oh, imagine this with Vader. Yeah. Rick. Yep. You're gonna shoot Sigma yeah. five. It's like no. a. It's like a reverse juke, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah. So again, I like it. Hopefully, it comes in at a decent point value, and they don't say, "Oh, this is a five point ship," because nobody will play it then. I don't want a five point yeah, interceptor that's I, gonna die. I think that this would come out to be like a five point ship, I think, just because this is going to be hard to kill. If you think about it, right? If you're rolling three dice and you can only con uh, convert two, that's going to be one damage um, that the defender is going to be, be able to put in before you roll your three dice. So that's going to be really hard to to take out. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We'll now, see. The, the other caveat is that it's only hit results. So if you end up rolling... Uh, only critical results, then sensor jammer does nothing. So yeah, and the other yeah. thing is, is you got to think about it. When you take that target lock, somebody else does. That means they can't spend it. So yeah. yeah, somebody like a Vader probably doesn't spend it anyway. But you don't. I mean, again, if Vader is rolling three three red dice and gets like one crit and two blanks, are you going to FTC or are you going to spend your yeah. target lock? You're going to probably spend your target lock. That's just what you're going to. The naturally, you're probably not going to go away from that. Um, yeah. So you're you are giving a little offense up, I in my opinion. You know, I guess unless you're Vader defender, right? Vader defender probably doesn't give a shit. <laughs> he's, he's like, yeah, <laughs> whatever. I'm gonna leave the lock on there because I don't care because I just make it blinks disappear into hits. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. The next one is Sigma Six. It comes with Daredevil and Afterburners, which we all know very well. Um, and they did not um modified daredevil so i i like that piece of it that is exactly the same the interesting piece of this is um that after you fully execute a speed three to five maneuver you may spend one charge to perform a slam action now this is going to be insanely crazy right so think about it you do a five straight on setup they come in three hard thinking they might be able to get you you then slam and get behind them. You don't get to shoot, but you're behind them. And now you could go after objectives. This is, to me, that's what this ship is. Is an, is so, it, This ship is going to be very good for um, uh, getting behind very slow-moving ships like YV-666. It's going to be good for getting behind TIE Fighters. Um, those that's, that's a huge one. Somebody like a Luke or a Wedge. You know, like, can you imagine if this thing can bust a move right behind wedge and then next turn all you're doing is a one hard two hard or a three hard to get right behind them again i mean like that just seems really good to me and the so you're going to be able to do two five straights let's say right then you're going to be able to do a one hard and then a boost into another one hard so you're going to go up up turn this way turn this way and you, in in two turns you can literally be turned around shooting at somebody crazy yeah that's just cr yeah. that's crazy to me. Um, I will say the best is going to be if, what do you do if you slam, right? And so this is a question, uh, a, a rules question. But let's say I, I five straight, 
and I slam and then it goes all the way to the edge of the board. Like so that it goes off the board. You lose, then so you just lose that ship, right? Yeah. Like it's just gone yeah, just because it's ship. a maneuver, right? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i like we need the worth of, scott where's the bounty for this shit like i want to see this as a bounty like this is something that would be absolutely hilarious and you know what's going to happen on a stream somewhere and the best will be is if amg actually does it themselves on accident i will laugh like like when he blew up that <laughs> q when he blew up like that q11 or whatever yeah you remember that and they're like yeah i like, remember why that. did you just get rid of a full health ship what is wrong with you <laughs> <laughs> like, who 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 trigger who didn't take the actions to not trigger that you know anyway but it would be funny so i like this shit yeah, like, actually a lot you definitely need to know your rule of 11 to know that you know if you place your your ship all the way at the edge of range one to the front and you do two five straights you're gonna go off the board no matter what yeah. like <laughs> you're done so uh but yeah yeah i i like that uh i definitely like that aggressiveness that you could do from turn one and just get in there and the best part of it is that the, the slam action is free right you're not doing that during your perform action step so you can still slam then afterburners and then if you're not stressed you can take that evade token uh which is going to help you survive those initial shots and now your now your your opponent has to make a decision on whether or not they have to turn to engage you or ignore you and go for the objectives. And now they're getting uh, a three to four dice in their backs from this interceptor. Uh, if this has the points to have, oh, actually no, never mind. I was gonna say if this points had had to uh, to run out maneuver would be great, but no, it's you standard. Can. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. so, um, is there a ship in standard um with? empire that could take a disarm token away from another ship i don't think there is right no actually no um okay. if the the only person actually no it's it's reds i was thinking seven sister about sony with uh with red tokens so but um but yeah no there's nothing on empire that could take that away right now okay that's good let's keep it that way amg please don't do something stupid because can you imagine being able to slam behind somebody yeah like that be that's great. dirty, right? Like that would be dirty. And, and oh, and I'm getting rid of my disarm token. Here you go. Now I get to shoot you. Ugh. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I don't think we covered Wampa. I don't. I went back and looked, and I think this is yeah. new, right? Like this yeah, is a new ship me. we missed. Yeah, they briefly talked about it in the stream, but I don't believe we actually had the card to to view uh, on this. So yeah, this is definitely new for us. So he still has the standard ability. Uh, while you perform an attack, you can spend a charge to roll one additional die. After defending, you lose the charge. Uh, the big difference here is a stat line for Wampa. Instead of having three hull, he now has four. So he essentially has a hull upgrade. Uh, it does come with elusive, which is probably the correct um, the correct talent to always have on it. And then we have a new card called Vengeful. Um, it, it works a little bit like Disciplined. It reads, after a friendly ship at range 0 to 3 is destroyed, if that the ship is limited, you remove, uh, you may remove one of your red tokens or recover your recurring charge on your ship card, uh, which is really interesting because with the wording on this, you can actually take out enemy target locks on this. You could take off stress tokens. You could take off strain tokens if you had any, um, or if somebody already previously engaged you um, to take off your charge, you now recover your charge again. And you get to shoot those three dice when it comes to your turn if you still have that charge. So this makes so this, dirty. yeah, it makes it really dirty. I, I do like this version of Wampa, um, probably better than the standard one, honestly. Oh, a hundred percent. This far. is I mean, you. You have, and and notice the elusive on Wampa, the right call that everybody should be making with with Wampa. Yep. But um. Yep. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. There's no way this is a two point ship. Like to me, this is a three point ship. Um. E e e easily but i don't know they might give it to us at two points for christ's sake and now so jj noticed not only is there two talent slots for wampa because wampa somehow more talented than he normally is i want to know if vengeful's coming to empire like is this their test run like are they like oh let's put this on this ship and test it with everybody because that card seems pretty big in yeah in in, in empire i could be wrong but this seems pretty, especially with some of these ties that could take cannon or uh, not cannon missile slots. Yeah. You know, like, can you imagine this on Moth Gideon? Yeah, exactly. Because I think Moth yeah, can I take think that... ATP, can he? Yeah, you yeah. can. Yeah. Oop, yeah. Here's ATP. Oh, vengeful. Boop, ATP again. Oh, my gosh. And oh, yeah. I haven't shot yet. 
Oh my, so dirty. Yeah, this is this is one of those moments where I'm glad that this is just restricted to just this ship and not available to like. Imagine when the gunboats come out and they can take Ugh. vengeful, like free reloads, basically. Ugh. Yeah, um, I'm just glad this comes out. Now that being said, we we know that there's a card pack coming out next year um, that will have a lot of new cards and pilots coming out. Who's to say that they may not include that in that particular pack? But I'm just hoping that this particular card stays just with this pilot because of that potential to abuse it with a lot of ordnance carriers, um, specifically the gunboats that were announced to be coming out, as well as the the type bombers that are also coming out that can carry ordnance and have that. I think that's All pretty right. strong. So Deslin points out it's reoccurring charges. We miss that. So that's oh better. oh yeah. okay. Yeah, thank God, fair. like that's fair. that's that's better. That's fair. Now that still yeah. doesn't mean you still couldn't put that with you know like an IO or uh, uh you could still put that um on Moth Gideon because he could have use his other charges. Like so, there I think there's other uses for it. So we'll see if it comes out. We'll see. Notorious is the only yep. thing I can think of uh, yeah. with Moth. But yeah, yeah. Good point. Good point. Yeah. All right. Woof. Dodge the bullet there. Yeah. Two point tie fighters being able to do that crap. All right, Gavin Garvin was I think the last one. I don't remember seeing a Garvin card before. Um, yeah, was there? So we covered this. I don't. I, I this was I not in their did. stream. I'll tell you what. This was not in their stream. So yeah. I went back and looked. So yeah. I don't remember covering so, it. I guess if we did, it is what it is. But um, yeah, nothing pretty, nothing special with this one here. He still has his basic ability, which is after you spend a focus token, you can pass it on to another friendly at range one to three. Um, he does have uh, hope built in. Um, the advanced proton torpedoes and R5K6. Now, he does not have attack speed, uh, which some of the other, um, the other T65 pilots have. Um, so he's not going to be able to go as fast to keep up with those other X-Wings. Uh, but still having the ability to uh, to take out face down damage cards and with R five K six can be pretty strong. So, yeah. All right. So the next one is from the Coruscant pack, and I apologize because they didn't give us individual pictures. So um, we're just gonna have to do it. And I don't understand what this is, but this just seems insanely crazy to me. Um, I don't know what this goes on. But this looks like a large ship, but it's hangar so, bay, right? So this is going to be the actual uh, scenario objective for the Battle of Coruscant. Okay. This is what you're trying to take down in order for the for Anakin and Obi-Wan to enter uh, thematically, according to like, the movie. Um, so this is essentially the target that the Jedi are trying to take down with their, um, with their ships, uh, so that way they can rescue the Chancellor. Um, this actually gives a lot of context to why they actually gave the ancillary Angan cannons to the uh, to the Ada twos uh, where they where they uh, like showed them. Um, the ion weaponry is going to be a big deal um, because it's going to enable them to take down this objective faster, especially with the CIS uh, ships being able to respawn uh, during the um, the scenario. Um, they're going to have a, a very limited time window to try to get down these shields and get in there as quickly as possible. Oh, so do you think they're going to give yeah. us like a little cardboard ship to put on the table? Is that what we're going to get? And who who has 15 Consider. who has 15 yeah. shield tokens that they can use? Not me. <laughs> it's like, probably going to be in the epic dial that you can like, <laughs> yeah, like twist and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's going to be that. But, I mean, it would be cool to have, like, a flat mat, like, you know, how they have for the trench run, like, something mm -hmm. like that, but with, the, like, the shields on it. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, little spots on the board where you had to flip the shield around. Oh, it'd be even better if it yeah. says you can't run into the ship. Like, so you, if you hit the ship, you explode and die. Like, that would be even better. <laughs> yeah, right? Make those K-turns deadlier, right? Hell yes. <laughs> I mean, you think if you if you think about it, that's thematic, right? Like technically speaking, if you yeah. K turned and you K turned into a ship, you're dead. Like you're not living through that. <laughs> like that aid is not living, buddy. It's gone. So Contrail was new. Contrail was not in there. Um, again, it seems be he has this thing that says while you defend or perform an attack, the bearing of something is the same as the enemy ship, which is basically his thing, right? Like so that's. That's really just his ability. Um, 
changing your focus result to a blank, which nobody remembers, but you know, it's there. Uh, he has something called something for this born for this, born right? For this. Yeah. yeah. So mm-hmm. while another friendly ship at range zero to two defends, I don't know if it says if it's strained, it may spend your focus or evade token as if it was theirs and you gain a strain token. So we're not, I'm not hundred percent sure, but that sounds pretty awesome. Actually for contrail, that sounds pretty good. And an I five yeah, like definitely. that. Yeah, they they had previously spoiled another one of the um, they had previously spoiled one one of the other ships for this when they first announced this. Uh, so the full wording for Born for this was: While another friendly ship on range zero to defense, if you are not strange, you it may spend your focus and evade tokens as if that ship has them. It does. If you do, you gain one strain token. So it's kind of like the network calculates or, or network calculations for like the CIS except you're dealing with focus and evades here. And in exchange for that, you're taking a strain on your ship when it does that. Um, so it does make the ships a little more tankier, a little harder to kill um, because they can share those tokens around at the expense of uh, getting that strain for future future defense. Yeah. And did the other vultures have this charge token here at the bottom? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. No. Yeah. No, I don't know what this is. It's not the discord yeah. token. I don't think it's going to be this contingency protocol, but I yeah, don't know. I mean, it I, might be. I don't think so. I think this is going to be a new ability that's going to be added on to DFS. It might be just um, his standard ability now that doesn't require a calculate. It just takes the charge. We'll oh, see that, once they actually spoil would, the whole thing. That would be nice. That would yeah, be so nice. Be you know how amazing. often I want to spend a calculate to not take crits? Very, very little yeah. on a droid. Like, oh, exactly, yeah. Like, especially if you hit three dice, like, take the crit, die, I guess. Yeah, um, so they're going to have something called a contingency protocol. I'm assuming it says you may perform a barrel roll or a calculate action. That would be my assumption. Um, I don't remember seeing that on the other ones either, but um, I didn't pay much attention uh, to it. I think they did spoil it on one of the um, tri fighters. Uh, give me a second. Let me just take All a right. look here. Yeah, you go look that up. Yeah, um, they did. So, um, contingency protocol it reads after the ship is uh is destroyed another friendly ship i mean zero three with contingency protocol may perform an action even while stress um so it's uh it, it basically affects the ships around the one that you that was destroyed uh for this so um getting the ability to just take that extra action either to like probably like barrel roll or boost into a better position or even take an additional like um, uh, calculate or evade could be a big deal for um, for the other the other ship. Yeah, seems pretty cool. Yeah, they also had this one right here, which is called kickback. And I don't do we have a kickback? Yeah, we do. We do have a kickback. He is in the torrent. Um, I don't believe this is this. I believe yeah. It's it looks like it's the same. Um the same ability the standard one uh in uh that's already available uh, from like the, the the republic core set is it's at the perform a barrel action you may perform a red target lock action um and then here it says if you do after you perform the target lock action you can gain a strain token to something uh yeah i can't it's too it's too fuzzy but it looks like you can now take a strain token for an added effect after you take that red uh, target lock. Um, so it looks like you can either remove a token or stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I'm interested to see what this kickback is. And the other part of it is that the original kickback is an initiative four. This one is an initiative five torrent. Um, and it has six really hulls. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They have one extra hull. Yeah. Yeah, yep, yeah, exactly. Yep. Desert Iceman. That, that's exactly it. It has the extra haul, which I'm guessing some of these other ones will. Um, so really yeah. then all they did is show us the back of the box, which I think we've seen before. Um, I don't think that that's really new. I threw that in there just because I thought it was interesting um, uh, to go back and kind of look at it because I think the... I don't remember seeing the Holocron or the 311 spoiled mm-hmm. yet, and I don't remember seeing Click or Jag yeah spoiled jet or obi actually now you mentioned i don't see obi spoiled jet yeah so 
they haven't they haven't well it's what it'll be they did anakin shakti and then some of the clones uh and they did dooku with some of the the tri fighter and i forget what else but uh but yeah, yeah there's still bombers. quite a few pilots yeah yeah there's still quite a few pilots that they have been spoiled so we'll probably be seeing this a little bit closer to the time of release so it'll be exciting to see what they bring there so all right so that was all of the spoilers that i had did you have any that i yeah. missed jj no that's it that's everything that we got so far i'm right. um, looking forward to to that pack so well, now we're going to kind of move into the list for the qualifiers so i will apologize so i'm gonna i guess i'm just gonna make a statement kind of like what we did the other week i don't want to go through all the lists that are just boring right like I will put the top list in, but I feel like just going even through top eight, there's just so much overlap um, in lists. And, and maybe it's me, and maybe I'm just being cynical, but I, I'm not going to go through every... We're not going to continue to go through all those lists. So there might be some lists that I'll put in interesting lists that will um, be something we could talk about that may not have made cut, or it may have made cut. But something I, that caught my interest that I thought was really, really cool. Um, so fun... One, the Dutch World Qualifier Open. Congratulations, Fon. Um, using the the Duncan esque is what we'll call it. Um, <laughs> three ship and a support pub republic list. I'm not gonna go through every upgrade. I don't, the the only difference that I see in here is Anakin has a shield upgrade and R4 P117. Um, yeah, that's that's the main difference I see. Uh, I don't I don't know like so it is what it is it's cool um, but it's something that's been going around so the runner up was Alex Bull Bullutin um, with a typical Empire list but this one like this I this is an actual like tie swarm like I would consider yeah. this a real tie swarm um, it has how runner Mauler Scourge Gideon one ISB Jingo West and Wampa and and I think JJ, you and I need. I want to know your thoughts on this in a minute because I'm a little confused why we wouldn't bring just two Jingoists. I get Wampa's cool and all, but like if you're limiting yourself a little bit here, it almost feels like you could have two Jingoists and have all the higher initiative. But that's just me. Um, they I mean, run it does provide you. It does provide you a little bit of offense um, with the Wampa if they decide to um to go after it and that it allows for i think jj's frozen jj's frozen all right hopefully he comes back um either which way the um the there you go. oh you know you're back we we, we lost everything yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry no so like i was saying um for for wampa i think that um, it's just providing that extra bit of offense, you know, because in this ship here, the majority of these ships are going to be running a rolling two attack dice here. Um, when you take a look at like Scourge, for instance, if he happens to be in that close range, that's going to be four dice. So Wampa is just another one of those potential three die attacks, if not four, at range one if he's ignored. Um, if you decide to go over the like more higher priority ships in this case, which would be like Howl Runner or Aiden, um, which help really make these ships a lot more effective. Um, so it's just providing that temptation for your opponent to go after. Uh, the Jingwis certainly can be good, giving out that strain, but rolling more dice is always better than allowing, uh, letting your opponent roll less dice. Um, it, it's it's mathematically you're more likely to get a a result, a, a good result on a red dice than your opponent is to um, to roll a good green result. All right. Fair enough. Uh, anyway, it was a little bit different of a list. Uh, crack shot is the main theme of this list. So hopefully he's very good at it. Yeah. They're very good at setting up their bullseyes. So I found a couple of lists I thought were, were a little bit more interesting. And I, I know double decimator is not like something new, but we have Admiral Sharanu coming back, right? So that's that's different. We haven't seen that since they got rid of Sloan. That everybody's been running Oinkin and Morna Key. For one more point, you could put Sloan in here, or not Sloan, uh, Sharanu in here. And they moved and put Seven Sister, Ruthless, Death Troopers, Tiberian Saxon, and Proxies 
Then on Vermeil, they have Ruthless ISB Slicer, which, JJ, we should talk about that in a second, and Darth Vader. And then Oinkin has Ruthless Proxmine's Dauntless Hondo and the Child. Yeah. So ISB Slicer, I I wonder how many times that got off. I mean, it, it's definitely a really nice upgrade from Vermeil, um, because Vermeil still gets that um, that passive mod on offense to change a, a die result to a hit result uh, with his ability. So Vermeer can actually concentrate on jamming their opponents uh, with uh, its ability and then using ISB slicers to ensure that it's still And we lose JJ. Are attacking Oiken. Yep, can you hear me? We can <laughs> uh, my internet is cutting in and out. Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, so um, Vermeil being able to use its um, its action to jam opponents and still have the passive attack mod uh, with his ability um, helps out Captain Oiken, who has the child. Who has the child, and then allows you to take target locks. And I agree, Deslin. Um, I I think the seventh sister use here yeah. is great, right? Like you have seven yeah, sisters. Absolutely. No one wants to take stress around you. You can just change everything to anything, and and then on top of that, you have death troopers, right? So yeah. if these if you get close, you're essentially these ships are saying, if you come near me, you will regret this. And I think there's an armada list with a couple of decimators and they have whatever the ship that's like a little bit bigger than a decimator that does similar things to this. But I remember there being an armada list that feels similar to this type of a thing. Get close to me and I'm going to punish you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I definitely like to, to see how he set this up. I do like the use of ruthless across the three ships um, just to like ensure that, uh, that you get like damage through as much as you can onto the enemy ships um, but I wonder how much faster these ships burn down because of that. So, yeah. Probably a little bit, but you never know. I guess you never know. The next one was from Marci Marcian. I, I guess I should stop trying to say people's names. Marcin um, Mysik. There you go. <laughs> and that's a unique Republic list. JJ, you want to take that? Yeah, absolutely. So we got Mace Windu and the Delta 7 with Brilliant Innovation, Heightened Perception, R4P, Astromech, and Calibrated Laser Targeting. Uh, click with Dedicated R3, Besh, uh, Padme, Juke Passive, R4P, uh, and Plasmas, Luminara, and the Delta 7 with Patience, R4P, and CLT. And then Ahsoka Tano as well with Patience, R4P, 17, and CLT. Um, really nice to see this kind of list here um, for the Republic. Uh, it's essentially three Jedis and then two really good um, like additional ships in Padme and Click uh, with no lat support. That's something that we haven't seen in quite some time for the Republic. Uh, those uh, those Aether sprites are very, very uh, maneuverable and they can uh, trigger those CLTs to get those extra uh, dice on the tax and they can do they can work really well. Padme, um, she's a secret tech here. Um, it, uh, along with Click, not only are you denying the um, the additional die at range with Click, you're also um, keep the mix, and that is really really good, especially against these uh, these Jedi's. Yeah, and I think Padme is interesting, right? Like that's an interesting choice. Um, and it's it's a it's a ship I ask if people are sleeping on, right? I asked that question because I wanted to know like why does nobody use Padme? Is Padme just like overcosted, or is she like kind of fall into that weird bubble, right? You know, like is she just yeah. in that weird bubble where she's not worth five, but if you move her to four, she's definitely not worth four, or worth she's worth more than four, you know? Yeah, and. And even even more so with Luminara, right? Because her ability allows her to spend a force to change a hit result back down to a focus result for the enemy. So if you do that, you have the possibility of automatically denying that conversion for your opponent with Padme if they're both in the arc. So that is just extra like hurt for for your uh, for your opponent. Yeah. So I like I said, I think the reason I picked this list is because I think this is very unique. Um, yeah. It is not relying on lats to just punish everything. 
and no seventh there's no seventh league gunner in this list um i don't know like this is a list i i feel like i could put on the table and feel comfortable with this type of a list like this is kind of my style um without having to have a bunch of lats to run around yeah so, exactly yeah i like it I like it a lot uh the last list i thought was only interesting only because it had soons here in it other than that it's not really interesting um and that's because i miss soons here a lot but soons here has shield upgrade lone wolf predator um vader with hate pattern analyzer ftc um and afterburners help in the reaper and i had inversio with heavy laser cannon and trick shot so uh trick shot definitely interesting on on Aiden, but i'm assuming because Aiden can only save herself <laughs> like yeah um i guess I mean, it, it's that she can do whatever she wants then right yeah exactly like if you decide to concentrate on Aiden, i mean she can like really put in the hurt with that hlc and then having palpatine to help her mod if she needs to like barrel roll or something yeah, it almost feels like with her, you can with the, the whole pelt thing, you can add, you get to add that extra die with trick shot, right? Like, so it's just like it's a five dice laser cannon now. And I don't know, it, it, it feels it feels good and bad at the same time, though. I am with you, Desi. I prefer the ion cannon. I'm not as good at an I4. Um, oops, just lost my mic. I'm not as good at an I4 uh, getting my bullseyes lined up. So um, I think I like the I the ion better too. Um, we have been playing around at locals with tractor beam. Um, that was kind of something we had been uh, as well. So let's move on to the next set of lists. And if JJ joins us back, we'll add them back into the stream. If not, then it'll be me. It'll be all me tonight, I guess. <laughs> so there was a Roma Worlds qualifier, I believe, in Italy. Um, that we that that happened as well that one so the last the dutch qualifier had like 38 to 40 something people this one i believe had closer to 100 and they had two days worth of um tryouts and then a final for it so the winner of the list was none other than a rebel list Right, so a rebel list actually ran and won the tournament. Um, and this will rebel list is different. So, like, I'm so I, so if Sandy listens to this later, I I kind of called them out in the Nickel City chat a little bit because I said rebel is a one trick pony in my opinion, or the players are unimaginative. Y'all could pick which it is, and I'll just go on the limb and just say. That's how I feel about Rebel. Like Rebel is, oh, we're going to give you weird mixed arms and allow you to just be an Alpha Strike list and we're going to not care. It's just going to be, we're going to do one forwards, two forwards. We're just going to like blah, blah, blah. And then somebody thought it was a fun idea to give them Trek Theory Simulator to B-Wings. And I just kind of said, nope, that's stupid. <laughs> Um, so now we're kind of back to, oh, we're going to coordinate you and pass tokens around and shoot missiles. And if chafe clouds are that big of a deal to rebel lists and you can't create a level list that can win without having to face off against chafe clouds, then I feel that that archetype to just die and be done with it. Like, it's just it's like when we there, we shouldn't have to prepare to be able to just say all we want to do is throw torpedoes like that just seems silly. Right. Um so this list drew my interest because they have Arvel, which is one of the best A A wings in Repu or Rebel for that price. Like period, hands down. Love yeah. love Arvel. Crack shot and elusive. Crack shot and elusive. A double talent spend right there to help Arvel live. Arvel, I assume, is your objective getter. Um, and then you have the standard Wedge, Fen, Dutch, and Kraken. Um, with kind of a mixed set of arms, um, and except for Fen has Swarm Tactics and Tristan Wren, which is interesting because Tristan Wren helps with the Proton Torpedoes and the Plasma Torpedoes. Um, and then on top of that, 
Feng can say, hey, who wants to be an I-6? I'm assuming it's going to be 99% of the time Kraken, right? Because you bring Kraken to an I-6, then uh, Kraken goes, let me shoot, and then give an action to somebody else. Well, I mean, I would argue that you would also do Dutch as well, since he has plasma, so you can take off an extra shield so yeah, to cracking. set up the wet shot. Oh, yeah, yeah, fair point. Yeah, I didn't think that, yeah. But yes, I, so, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I get your point, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um. So I don't know. I thought this was interesting, Rebelist, though, right? Like, this This is definitely, let's Rebelist get rid of Luke. Of the Empire. Hmm? No, go ahead. <laughs> oh. Uh, this is an interesting list, and I, I feel that, yes, it has a few of the same tools. Like, I don't feel Dutch was super meta, um, you know, because Dutch just dies, typically. But in this list, you don't care as much if, if Dutch dies, because you still have Kraken and Wedge, and if they're going to focus on Dutch, you, you got your coordinator and then two other basic I-6s that are going to run around with you. Yeah. So. The next one is Empire. JJ, you want to take it? Yeah, absolutely. So this one is almost another, uh, it's a nice variation on this one here. So we got two Reapers here, and then, of course, your standard loadout, the TIE Interceptor, TIE Fighters, rather. Uh, Iden with Elusive Iron Cannon, Gideon, uh, Moff Gideon with Clusters, uh, Contraband Cybernetics, uh, and then the two Jingoists with Contraband Cybernetics, Wampa with Elusive, the correct loadout. Uh, Vizier uh, with Palpatine and then Captain Faroff with Ruthless the Child and Targeting Computer, uh, which I actually like that loadout for Faroff there. Um, and uh, this definitely uh, definitely hits a lot better, I would say, um, than the uh, um, in terms of like like pushing out damage. Uh, having those two Reapers to really start like sending out those three die guns and having those mods on them to help push in damage is really good. And then those TIE Fighters can also punish really well. Moth Gideon also giving out those extra strain uh, earlier at Initiative 4 to uh, help push in damage uh, with the bigger guns on the list there. I do like this variant of the uh, of the Swarm. Yeah, I thought this was cool. Two Reapers. Uh, definitely something different uh, that we had not seen um, a lot of. Uh, so I think I think this is interesting. And look, it's a top cut without a, a Vader list so far. Right. So like, I mean, not trying to be a dick, but there is other things in Empire that win that's not Darth Vader. So um, I don't know. So then we move on to a top four. And and again, normally I was not going to do just top four, but like their top four actually was pretty diverse. Like I was very surprised yeah. by this. They had another rebel list. So this is two, two rebel lists in, to in, in, in the high end top cut. Um, this one is Lando with my favorite person, Nia Nub, Perceptive Copilot, Bistan, Millennium Falcon, Jake with Elusive Marksmanship Concussions and Vectored Cannons, Kraken with Plasma Torpedoes and FTC, and Ma Magva Yarl, which I think is the most underrated U-Wing, and everybody should be flying these bl that bloody U-Wing because it is a... If you do not kill this Ewing, you are not getting anything but natural mods on your on your list. That's just that's it. And like that, I just oh, I just I love that Ewing. That's that's probably my that's there you go. That's my favorite rebel ship. It is. That's my yeah. favorite rebel ship. And that has the child. So if you shoot it, it's getting it's getting its force back. Uh, it's contraband, tactical officer for the coordination and marksmanship for shits and giggles. Um, mm -hmm. I feel that's a pretty solid, unique rebel list. Personally. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, I definitely like, I definitely like this combination of ships too. It's like, do you have a, both a, uh, a Falcon and a Ewing on a list with two other ships? Uh, feels really, really good uh, for this list here. Um, I definitely like Jake Farrell and Iron Kraken working together uh to to help um help also put in damage jake for just passing off that focus early on with vector cannons uh feels really really good um especially if you could get it off to lando uh lando can essentially end up with three actions <laughs> you can uh jake pharrell uh two focuses early on during the system phase and then lando 
has the ability to then do a target lock or boost or provide another action to somebody else and already have those focuses available. Just absolutely great. Yeah, I, yep, I agree. I, I like this. I think this is great. Um, I think the question becomes is, could you have, um, instead of Lando, could, is Han better, right? I don't know. You know, either which way. I think this is, a, this is a, again, a very good list that Lucas came up with. Yeah, absolutely. All right, our next top four list is the Republic list. JJ, if your internet's not going to die on us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Raviolo uh, showing up, also known as Giovanni Di Rauso. Uh, running a Republic list here, he has Hound uh, in the Lat with Corky Kreez and Satine Kreez, uh, which is a nice combo, actually. I like this one a lot with Seven Fleet Gunner, Obi-Wan in the Delta 7 with Elusive R2-D2 and CLT, Mace Windu with Heightened R4-P17, and then Contrail and Click in the V-Wings, uh, Contrail with Crackshot R7-A7, the Crit Bot, uh, and then Click with R3 Astromech as the standard loadout. Uh, definitely a really nice mix arms here. I do love the uh, the mix between Corky Crease and Satine Crease. Uh, Corky being able to pass off tokens to friendlies and Satine Crease able to um, give out either focus or uh, or evade tokens um, and uh, and allowing the, your ships to to survive more. You can essentially Satine Crease first, um, take a disabled uh, weapons disabled with the Hound. Um, and uh, take an evade token, and then Corky crease it to another ship. And if you already reloaded seven fleet gunner, you weren't firing anyway, and you're providing it. This makes uh, hounds like pure support. Fantastic. Yep. And when hound decides to give out that other token, and they gain a deplete token, you could take it. The first one. Yep. It's yours. It. It's yours, mm -hmm. maybe you. Don't have you to ain't shooting anyway, yep. so. <laughs> yeah, like, and this exactly. is where I've argued that I believe Hound is better than Hawk, between the yeah. fact that you can be the blocker, um, on top of you're gonna get to move and not get blocked because it is a lat. They don't like that. Um, you do lose the weird lat shenanigans that you get with Hawk, but I, I don't know. Like to me, this is. I think Hound is in the current meta. Hound is a million times better. Um, and they especially, like I said, this with this list, this, ugh, this is just so dirty, too. I like that they use Mace over Ahsoka, too. Even though everybody wants to use Ahsoka, I think Mace is the better call with that three force there. Yeah, so. absolutely. Now, you know, you could give up Contrail if you wanted and get Ahsoka and Lumi. I, I know, but the I-5 is just... Is, I know. Really good. My i fi is just too good. I don't know. It might be more fun to have more Jedi. But anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So the next stuff is kind of the list I found interesting. Um, this one is a Boba Kanan Dengar list. Boba Kanan Dengar. So they're putting Maul on Kanan, obviously. Boba, same typical loadout, except for instead of the um instead of then putting on uh, electro chafe missiles, they're going with proxy mines essentially. Um, mm -hmm. and then Dengar has Notorious, so you don't shoot Dengar because he's going to shoot you back and give you double strain. Um, Gar Saxon to remove that strain <laughs> and shoot, shoot for dice at you. Uh, FTC, uh -huh. a blade of plating, um, which I'm not exactly sure why they chose a beta plating, but it is very good because you can move through your obstacles. I think, yeah. um, and it allows Dengar to be a little bit more versatile. Punishing one, and then the R5 P8 uh, droid, which is kind of the staple for most of those jump yeah. masters. I don't know. Yeah, this I like is this definitely, list. This is definitely a more of an offensive build uh, type here. Boba Fett definitely just wants you to chase him. Um, he gets the rerolls out the back with Marauder, and he's going to drop proximity mines. And if you decide to joust Dengar, he's going to hit you back really hard. Um, he the the secret sauce on this is that you're either if you're if you're stressing to um, to like take an extra action or something like that you're basically going to turn on Gar Saxon. Um, if you don't and you shoot Dengar, Dengar is going to notorious you and still turn on Gar Saxon, and uh, you're you're going to be eating some uh, some really bad uh, shots here from Dengar. So this is definitely a very very offensive minded uh, list. Uh, and uh, with um, Dengar having Kanan support, 
number two will reduce that damage down easily. Uh, it's it's going to be really tough to get this uh, this list down. Yeah, I like this list. I think this is uh, interesting and would be something that would be kind of fun to put on the table as well. Yeah. The next one I picked because it has a gauntlet fighter in it, JJ. Yeah. And I believe Fabian made cut too. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure Fabian made cut or was at the top of that cut range. One of the two. So you want to cover that list? Yeah, so this one's another scum and villain list there. We got Cad Bean in the road class with Jamie Bean, Ion Cannon, FCC, Contraband Cybernetics, Xanadu Blood, Zuckus, and Ion Bombs, uh, which is a very dirty way to run Cad Bean. Uh, Manaru in the Jump Master with Notorious, Scar Saxon, Overtuned, Punishing 1, R5, P8. Uh, Gamma Key with Gleb and Dead Man Switch. And then Rook Cast in the Gauntlet with the Child. Uh, Mandalorian Super Commandos, Veteran Tail Gunner, Dropsy Bay, and Swivel Wing. Uh, really, really spicy list. I like this one a lot. Uh, Manaru, of course, just like Dan Garf in the previous list here, you shoot at him at initiative four. He's going to be uh, giving you that notorious and then shooting you back really hard. Um, Cad Bane, I got to say, um, just being able to eye on your opponent and then also uh, potentially pass on a stress with Zuckus after he makes you re roll a possibly good roll that you had. So dirty, so, so dirty. Uh, and uh, just really, really nice. Um, but the secret sauce here, Rook Cast. His ability to take a strain when he engages and get that automatic conversion, uh, just so good. And with these Mandalorian Super Commandos, if you fly them just right, I know I fly them a lot on stream, um, just being able to get that extra shot is good, or even just putting on the strain um, for to make your, your other shots hit that much more harder. Um, that can turn on either Guard Saxon's ability on Manaru or just help Rook just punch super hard. Uh, when he uh, when he gets into the center of the map. Yeah, really good. All right. I like that list. I think that's a cool little take on that yeah. as well. Uh, the last one I wanted to bring up was Luca. Again, it was mainly because we have Admiral Sheramanu, however you want to say that, with Ruthless <laughs> Plasma Torpedoes. Plasma Torpedoes, folks. Grand Inquisitor which I've never seen anybody run Grand Inquisitor crew ever. Um, Callus, Dauntless, Night Beast with Elusive, and Predator. Again, notice it's Night Beast with Over Iden or a Jingoist or Moff Gideon. Like, mm -hmm. it's Night Beast again. I, I like that. I think that's fun. Uh, Wampa with Elusive um, and Darth Vader with Instinctive Aim, Brilliant Evasion, Swarm Tactics, Advanced Optics, FTC, Cluster Missiles, which we never see on X1, and Munitions Failsafe. Yeah, uh, really nice. Now, if uh, people are not familiar with the Grand Inquisitor uh, for the Empire, his ability allows you to spend a force uh, whenever another enemy ship uh, performs an action at range uh, one to two from you, and then you can perform an action yourself. Yeah, so good. We lose JJ again. And he, he doesn't want to cooperate tonight. Yeah. Yeah, so apparently AMG just wanted to censor me, so that's why I couldn't give out like that explanation for that. So, <laughs> so does Agent Callus have a um have anything to do with Grand Inquisitor, or is it just kind of like an added bonus to have that? Yeah, it's just an added bonus there. Um, you basically pick your target that you want to have a passive mod against, and uh, once they die, you just pass on the uh the the condition onto another ship and now uh, rack has that other passive uh passive mod against the other one uh but going back to grand inquisitor this essentially lets uh Shirinu spend a force to get an action uh whenever another uh enemy ship at range once two is nearby um and that's before he moves so if you have a lower initiative enemy ship coming into Shirinu's range he can either grab a target lock uh before he moves especially if he's about to get uh, if he's about to bump um, and then Dauntless, um, you do a blue maneuver, bump into somebody, you can grab an objective with, Gaunt with Dauntless, or just take a reinforce that uh, Rack needs 
uh, to, for his ability. And, um, and yeah, you're great. Awesome. All right. Why don't we move on to the Nova Nova, right? Yeah. Hold on, I gotta fix it. I guess. I guess I'm not smart today. <laughs> so while we're setting that up, I do want to start off with saying congratulations to our friend of our podcast, Mr. Christopher Patrick, aka Crispy, uh, for winning uh, the Nova World Qualifier. Uh, had a great run, um, and of course, he ran his sig now signature list here uh, for the first order. Uh, Kylan with uh, instinctive aim, shattering shot, predator concussion missiles, optics, and uh, munitions failsafe. Uh, Malaris or Marksman Cluster Missiles, Scorch Predator, Fanatical Optics, Dread, uh, and Grudge with uh, with Skill Bombardier, Chaff, and Proximity Mines. Uh, he was the originator of this list, and we've seen it everywhere uh, since he pioneered this particular archetype for First Order. Um, he ran a very masterful uh, tournament this time around, uh, and uh, and well done for taking taking the uh, the the event. Yeah, and I'm sure we'll see that list, and they're going to break that list up anyway. Oh, yeah, so, without a doubt, yeah. <laughs> you know, if you didn't think that list was good, you definitely should know it now, and if they do not take this list apart, this list is just, everybody, everybody will just run this list now, so. So um, let's, let's go on that a little bit. So I, I, as far as the problematic parts of this, there, there's been, I, I've been noticing in the chats that people are, are like pointing to different parts of this list that are the more problematic part for you. What do you think is the most problematic that needs to be addressed like more urgently? Like personally, to me, it's, to me, it's the electro shape missiles, them being able to do the boost and then the skilled bombardier for those. Like to me, that's the worst piece of that. Um, worst worst piece of that. Like I, I don't think that's the worst part of the list. I think the worst, the bigger part of the list is the instinctive aim and the shattering shot. Um, and then being able to you know use advanced optics and basically spend all your force and come back to it. Though I think I think that's a little bit different than what he originally had ran, if I remember right. Um, but really to me, it's the electro shaft missiles. If we if we stop that. So you can't boost and do any of those things. I think you start, you don't neuter the list, but you allow the list to be more vulnerable. Cause I think those shape clouds are what protects that list. Like, Oh, I'm going to put a blanket in front of you. You're going to be taking jams and stresses, which is going to limit you. And even if, so even if you clear the, the chafe cloud, you're still taking it. You could possibly take a stress 50% chance. Right. And now you're going to take that stress and guess what? Now you just lose, lost your action. And it, 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 like, so I feel that being able to launch those and then kind of set yourself up allows for you to have the better first engagement um, with that. Um, and, and so I feel if we take some of that away, you, you, you lose some of that. And, and you can say don't joust, but um, there is not a great counter other than fire sprays, in my opinion. <laughs> like, yeah. like, fire sprays don't care. Force users yeah. don't care, but I'll tell you what those Adas are not the Adas. Those those um, Delta Sevens don't like stress. JJ though, yeah, sure yeah. they got force. They don't like the stress though. A fire spray don't get two shits because a fire spray is just gonna go whatever. I could either go one, two, three straight or a one banks. I don't care. And oh, if I have to do hards to get out of the range of it, I don't care either. And oh, if you could bomb me the next turn, it's not the end of the world. You're not gonna murder me off the table. Whereas something like a um, an Ada is going to be screwed. Um, so to me, that's that's my take. What's your take? Yeah, absolutely agree. Um, I, I think that um, this particular list just has a lot of um, has a lot of options that it can help deal with the the meta across the board. I mean, don't get me wrong. Um, Crispy is a fantastic pilot. He is a person that I played with uh, a few times here uh, back when I lived in Orlando. Um, he's just a fantastic pilot. He knows how to um, to analyze enemy lists and try to um, and try to pick them apart as he needs to. 
Um, he he knows how to fly the list very well, and that's why it is successful. Um, but uh, but yeah, the the list definitely has a lot of weapons on there that can help deal with a lot of things in the meta currently. And uh, in the last uh, in the final that we see here, he picked apart the resistance really well, and being able to take out those uh, those Y wings early and quickly. And um, and yeah, it, when when all the dice go right, this is a pretty tough list to beat. So yeah. Yeah, and I think you know, as they pointed out in the the, the chat, some of the best, some of the issue with this list too is is that um, it doesn't care about everything else, right? And it's just kind of there, and that's the only archetype style that we're kind of seeing is a salad um, from FO. And I, I agree, like having these bombers in there just feel a little bit better. Um, you couldn't maybe instead of nerfing chafe missiles, why don't we just bump it up a point? make the bombers worth five points I, I could see that being a viable let them keep their load out and make them five points each uh, that that's fine with me too I, I would be okay with that so yeah absolutely the next list is Kristoff with a resistance list essentially we have Ray with patience heroic Rose Tico Fen engine upgrade Ray's Millennium Falcon we all know my opinion on Finn and heroic so um just saying that there and then we have jaeger in the fireball with concussion missiles overtune targeting computer kai with elusive ion proton bombs target computer engine upgrade shasa with elusive dorsal thermal target engine upgrade and wilsa with dorsal l4 er5 thermals targeting computer and engine upgrade um Overall, a pretty decent control list um, along with uh, a hammer. And then Jaeger is kind of like the free for all that just kind of sits around. And I don't know. I don't know what Jaeger does. Like, to yeah. me, Jaeger just dies. <laughs> That's I mean, he's an initiative five pilot that can, like, just take advantage of the slam uh, more so. But that's about it. He's just an I-5. He's he's the uh, the contrail of resistance. That All right. People just forget what his ability is. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I could see that. I could see that then. Yeah. Um, so, again, uh, there's nothing really unique about this list, but uh, neither was there about Crispy's list because we've seen his list too many damn times. Then we have a top four. We have Duncan Howard, JJ, flying something different than the list he originally flew. And look, in under a month, this guy has come back, <laughs> has come back and somehow top forward. Um, and I think Duncan Howard only lost to Crispy. That's 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 who he lost yeah. to. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I call this here the uh, the Greg special. Uh, he flew this for quite a while. Uh, he has Poe Dameron, uh, the trigger happy flyboy version without maneuver R four Ferris wheel paint overdrive thrusters, spare spark canisters, black one and jammy beam. Um, so he basically sacrificed all the offense for Poe with like either torpedoes or the HLC for the added uh, maneuverability. Uh, and, and then we have and defense, yeah. And then uh, Ray, typical loadout that we see her here, uh, COVID now with heroic Jammy being here, Organa and R4 Astromech. And uh, that that uh, upgrade basically lets COVID now be a three dice gun um, that can also coordinate as well, uh, which is uh, really strong. Uh, really uh, a real interesting art type that we haven't seen in a while here. Uh, but, you know, Duncan Howard is Duncan Howard. He can uh, take a lot of lists and just uh, make it work for him. And uh, congrats for him to make it to the top four with uh, with Covenel, um that we haven't seen really too much in the meta recently. And wasn't that a challenge? Didn't somebody like did, was it GSP or was it Dio or D or, or Ryan? Somebody said like Covenel isn't going to make top cut or something like that. Somebody yeah, said I think that. it was fly better. Yeah, I think it was yeah. fly better. Yeah. <laughs> so there, there you go, D and Ryan. This is this is Duncan's uh, Duncan's list for you. I don't remember who it was, but it was somebody. Somebody said that, and then I was like. When I saw this list today, I was like, "You got to be kidding me!" He's like, <laughs> out. all right, cool, good. It yeah. shows you, um, to some extent, how powerful Ray can be. And, and so when we talk, and, and I kind of want to go uh, just real quick. If you think about it, and we talk a little bit here, Poe being defensive, this is more of an ace style play. Poe, and when we talk about how aces aren't part of the meta to some extent anymore because everything is, you know, munitions and everything is aggressive offense 
here we have a pole that's defensive that I bet you he played like an ace. That would be my guess. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Next top four list is Jonathan Grasser. Um, nothing special about this list. Um, and we're not going to go over it. So good list. Good job. Um, you know, getting into the cut. The only difference is we have Vader defender versus Vader in a um, X one. And the only big difference here, right with that is that they lose a, a ISP Jingoist. And obviously that doesn't matter because it's still made top cut. So we're going to move. Yeah. Past I mean, you, losing a Jingoist for an exchange for a fair off with seven sister. That's a pretty good trade. <laughs> that's not Honestly. who they traded for. He traded for Vader defender. That's what he traded for. Fair off with seven yeah, sisters. Yeah, always been fair. in that list. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Or I guess you could say it the other way. Maybe you're right, JJ. You could say it the other way. We gave up a we gave up two two point shifts for for Farah. Um anyway, whatever. I don't care. Moving on. Nova interesting list. So Cody Wood, a local of ours in Michigan, made um top cut. So they did make top cut and a very unique first order list. JJ, you want to take that? Yeah, um, I saw this uh, come up, and I was uh, I was actually happy to see Cody go on uh, to uh, to the top here. So we got Malaris with concussion missiles. Um, I'm wondering if he were missing the upgrade that he was happy he put on here, um, but no, no, I think that takes up all the points for Malaris. So never mind. Uh, we have silencer Kylo Ren with extreme maneuvers, sensor scramblers, and advanced proton torpedoes. And then recoil in the silencer with a predator sensor scramblers, and then rush with fanatical and lone wolf and sensor scramblers. Uh, really, really interesting archetype here um, that uh, that the first order has uh, being able to fit three silencers, and then Malaris in the uh, in the FO fighter. I definitely like this a lot. I like seeing silencers come back uh, to for the first order and do some work because they. They were the original workhorses, and they are still very, very good, even at their point cost. And, uh, and yeah, congrats to Corey for uh, making it all the way through the cut with this list. Yeah, I like this list a lot. Um, I, I would say if we don't see Malaris um, have any big issues, right, if Malaris stays at the same points value and they nerf Crispy style list, I, I feel this is a viable alternative. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. I mean, we've seen Catherine have success playing four silencers. This is just saying I'm going to fly Kylo Ren instead. So I like it. I watched uh, Cody play one game, I believe, on stream. Um, I believe they were on stream once. Uh, I, I really I, I do really like this list a lot, and I've seen this list played a couple of times. So the next one that I found interesting was Ted Trainee. Is that how you say that? Train yep. E? Training. Training. Train I. Train I. Um, and here's somebody you don't ever hear of. Surtek. He has Surtek with Lone Wolf and Ensnare. Surtek is in this list. And if he's got Lone Wolf, you know it like that means Surtek's over here versus the rest of the list. Um, I don't know. I like this. I am I think this is hilarious. Um they also have synced laser cannons on Cad Bane, which I kind of didn't think about because you, you can't get the um, you can't get the calculate for them. But I guess like if you think about it, it's just a three die gun that you get to shoot. That's all that is. So yeah. Cad Bane's always a three die gun, no matter where they are on the board. And oh, by the way, I have prockets now. I have now prockets. Um, I'm not super sold on the prockets, but I understand they're probably a very aggressive piece. Uh, same build out for Grievous. Um, DFS 81 has energy shells, but the bombardment drone has seismics and blazer bomb. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. Very the unique take here on the separatist list. I like it. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, it is a three and two list. I believe. I don't think they, well, you know what? Maybe they did make cut. I don't know. I'd have to go back and look. I can't remember. Not that I saw. No, no, they didn't. Yeah. But, um, what I like about this a lot is Blazer Bomb. This is something that I, I used a lot in Adepticon, and I actually grew to like the bomb a lot. Um, so essentially, if you set yourself up right, you can launch the Blazer Bomb ahead of you, and it's actually larger than some of the other uh, tokens for like uh, like Seismic or Proton Bomb, so it has a bigger area of effect. Once it explodes, it releases the Blaze, and then you can Seismic Charge the Blaze 
after it's been released. Um, yep. And it's it's a huge, huge area of effect. Um, so that's a really interesting take on it. I like that a lot. I am interested in Wolf versus Gravatic Deflection on Shirt Tech. Um, since you can uh, essentially get rerolls for uh, for having an opponent with the tractor token um, with uh, there, uh, but Shirt Tech's uh, ability to have rerolls on offense uh, so so good makes it a really good uh, ship offensively, especially if you get that bullseye. And uh, yeah, I like this list a lot. Yeah, I I wonder if the Shirt sure Tech Lone Wolf is there as a bait piece. Like I'm gonna go over here. Either you come deal with me. And if you give me one ship, I'm probably still going to win. And if you don't come get me, I'm, I'm going to come and snare you like baby. Like, I don't care about lone wolf at that point, because if you're chasing all my other ships, I'm just going to come get you. That's what this feels like. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the other part of it, too, is that you have an outmaneuver. So you bet that whoever's coming after church tech, Grievous is coming. Yeah. Grievous can come eat you. Grievous is going to come make you repent. And if you go after Grievous, then you got sure tech. Um, there. I I don't know. Like I I like that list. I think that's interesting. Um, I like that we're not seeing millions of Nantex, and I like that you know we have um, uh, uh, one Nantex floor. that. Yeah, you you're coming to hard clip. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> clip. Now we're gonna clip that. <clears throat> Somebody clip yeah. that and post that in Greg's channel, quick. What the hell happened? <laughs> you you disappeared and then you came back and you said something about coming hard. So that's all I know. <laughs> that's literally what it, you came like. I was in the middle of talking and then here you came back and say you're coming hard. And it's like, all right, bro. Like usually you can wait till after the stream for that. But whatever. Float your boat, man. You're, you're killing my PG rating here today. It's not even me. I do this time. All right. No, I was saying Grievous is coming hard. So it's the shirt to we know. Well, I know because Grievous is they're pincering you. You pick who you're gonna kill. Oh, uh, that's great, man. <laughs> <sighs> you're, ki you're killing all me. Right, all right. You're killing me. All right. All right. We'll never get we'll never get people subbing and Patreoning us with your dirty mouth like that. <laughs> um oh man. Next is Nate May. If your internet doesn't cut out cut out, would you like to take this unique resistance list that I we found? Yeah. Yes. Okay, go ahead then. Come on. Yeah. All right. So resistance here. We got a Kai Thranali, uh, a pilot that we normally see in the Y Wing here um in the T seventy with R sixty eight and pattern analyzer with HLC, Tim and Wexley with marksmanship, prime thrusters and HLC, uh Nee Num with marksmanship pattern analyzer and HLC. And then Elo Atzi with Crackshot Predator M9G8 and the S foils. Uh, really good T70 list here. I like this a lot. One here, um, the the Prime Thrusters for Tem and Wexley. Uh, really, really good because that means that Temin can still do either the 4K or the uh, the Talon roll and still have the free boost for its ability and um, and be able to get into a good position there. And Ninum, of course, being Ninum with Pattern Analyzer. Although I think I would probably sacrifice the HLC for uh, like heroic, um, and probably like a better droid. Um, watch, she's gonna come back in again and say something horrible. Maybe I should just mute him. I'm gonna mute him that way when he comes back in, nobody can hear him. Yep, nobody can hear him. So we don't know what he said when he came back in. Now we can hear JJ again. Yes. Sorry, guys. My internet, I'm working on it. it it's just been really bad today. So, anyway, so uh, I don't know. I will tell you one of our locals is running HLC and all of their, their, their T70s. So, and it seems pretty good. It, it does actually seem pretty good. The next one is Mr. Marcel Manzano running, for the most part, a very similar. Empire list, but with a new twist, we have Wampa, ISB Jingoist, Aiden with Ion Cannon, Moth with Ruthless Tracers, FTC, which I really like, actually, by the way. I really actually do like Moth with FTC. I think that's actually a really good choice. Um, I, w I could be convinced to not do um, 
thread tracers and to do um, a concussion missile or do a um, a do a um, cluster missiles because you can ruthless on both of those. Um, but anyway, and then Turfener, Turfener, which is making a comeback, baby, with a snapshot. And I will tell you when Turfener's um, dice hold up, that stupid ship does not want to die ever. It just it wants to always live every time. Every time I played one this week, yep. I don't remember who my opponent was, but I, I've been picking up random games because JJ doesn't like to play with me anymore. And um, <laughs> I've been picking up random games online and somebody was running a Turfiner and I was like, oh, holy shit, I've never seen this before. And sure enough, Turfiner rolled two to three evades every F and turn, every turn. No questions asked. Didn't have snapshot, though. So I like this list. I think this is definitely unique. Um, countdown with marksmanship. Crack shot and proton bomb seems pretty good too. Um, and we don't see many of the strikers. So I think this is kind of an opportunity for a striker to sneak in. Um, you know, I don't know. I like it. I think it's unique um, in the aspect of it's definitely different than what we've been seeing. Yeah, I had the opportunity to play Marcel with this list here and the way that he had set up. Um, this list here, just having Turfiner and Countdown on one side, and then the Tie the the Tie Fighters on the other side, uh, coming towards the middle to grab objectives. Uh, that uh, that FCC Tracer combo is really good, and Countdown is just a pain to take down because uh, you can roll really really well, and Countdown can uh, roll, take a look at the side to just take a stress and cancel all the results and just take one hit. Um, and if you don't concentrate fire on countdown, countdown is just going to stay there the entire game. And then if you chase them, you got the proton bombs to deal with. So it's a lot to deal with. And this is a lot of dice with a lot of mods. Um, it is uh, definitely uh, something to, I, I, I like this particular list. It's very different from everything that we've seen from Empire for the most part. And uh, I think this is uh, probably a lot of fun. Yeah. Awesome. Next one is Andrew Giovanni. JJ, if you're in yeah, uh, well. running Scum and Bentley, Crassus, Trellix, and the Fire Spray with Marauder, Sync Laser Cannons, uh, Contraband, IG 88D, and Chaff Missiles, Paylob with Moldy Crow, Lando, False Transponders, and Notorious, and Lima Kai with Dorsal, Tierfon Belly Run, and Proton, and Proton Torpedoes. And if I remember correctly, we actually saw this on stream. Uh, playing against a uh, a Vader swarm, and uh, this did very very well in uh, taking that down. Uh, Pela being able to steal those focuses or evades from Defender Vader, and uh, and being able to survive the scrum uh, with a bunch of Tie Fighters, uh, just a really really strong list. Like it a lot. Yeah, I do too. Um, I I still question the Paylob, uh, the Paylob choice over Kanan, right? Though or yeah. over uh, Protector at Gleb. Like I, I I just I like the list, and the reason I chose it was because it had Paylob in it because it was it like a, a okay, it was a different um Crassus Trellix. Like that was a different fire spray um loadout than I had kind of seen with the Sync Laser Cannons, which is actually really cool. Um, and what does Crassus's uh, ability do? Uh, Crassus is, uh, you can shoot special weapons out the, out the back. Oh, actually, yeah. no. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it yes, is. it is. So that's pretty cool. You got like, I, I, I understand, like really to some extent, it's kind of silly because you're getting a three dice shot, but at the exact same time, because you have IG 88 D with the calculations, you now have the ability to have two calculates, no matter where you're shooting, you can always spend the one. And then have the other one for either offense modification, or you can have it to prevent that extra dice. And I actually feel that that's a pretty decent. Um, I, originally, I was not sold on that, but I really feel that's pretty decent, especially because you put Marauder on, right? Yeah. Just for the back end rerolls. So all you're going to do is shoot your electro chafe missiles, then kind of crean away and get your calculates and then just shoot out the back and make somebody chase you with sync laser cannons out the back. All right, that's. I'm I'm gonna say that's that's a pretty genius. I, I like that. I think that's good. I yeah, think, absolutely. I just really don't see the. the I, I see Paylob as just kind of a way. I would almost put Gamut in there, right? Um, and then so maybe he, go ahead. here's the secret sauce in this particular build, right? Because we I I didn't realize the con. 
he doesn't have a combo because JJ just disappears from the stream all the time. And I will say Paylob with Notorious is pretty dirty. Um, especially because JJ doesn't exist anymore. But Paylob with um Notorious is is kind of a dirty, a dirty, dirty combo right there, right? Um because right. you have two arcs to use it in. Yeah, the, the what was what I was gonna say is Lando Carrigian is actually the secret some Paylob because um what he did on one of the My God. Yeah. So yeah, being able to use Lando to spend one of your green tokens that you stole to reroll dice, just spicy. So good on Paylob. All right. Moving on to the next one is Alexander running a seer swarm, which I will just sit there and say, didn't think we'd see that again. Um, so that's kind of cool. He's got a seer swarm with TA 175, electronic baffle, impervian plating. Um, and then he has two precision droids with shield upgrades and jamming beams, uh, probably because you can. Um, three of them, sorry. And then your DSF 81 with Discord's electronic baffle, which is hilarious. Hilarious. It's just hilarious. Um, and then we have the separatist drones with discords and grappling struts. All of them are sharing calculates. Everybody gets a calculate action. Nobody gets stressed unless you want the barrel roll. Um, I like it. I think it's cool seeing Seer um, show up here. I really do think that's pretty cool. Our last contender won our planning phase syndicate showdown in July. JJ, if your internet doesn't take a yes. shit, this is the, this is your last <laughs> chance, and I'm just going to end the show without you. Um, yeah, your so last chance to talk about our good friend who won. Yeah, so George Barrios, who actually made the top 16 uh, for this uh, for this event and, and face off against Crispy, running the Separatist Alliance, uh, General Grievous with Al Maneuver and Pervium, Django Fett uh, with Lone Wolf, Savage Oppress, Thermals, FCC, Delay Fuses, Slave One, and Beat uh, Veteran Tail Gunner, a Bombardment Drone with Proxies, Delay Fuses, and the Struts, and then a Separatist Drone with Discord Missiles and Independent Calculates, and then DFS also with the same loadout. Uh, it's really interesting to see this kind of CIS salad um, that uh, is actually really effective. Each one of these ships have their own um, their own roles to play in here. Those drones, obviously, the vultures being able to grab objectives really, really strong, and the bombardment drone able to threaten uh, with the uh, with the proximity mine. And then Grievous and Django, uh, those big, heavy hitting aces, you have to contend with them. Uh, while uh, trying to, uh, they, they're basically there to all the attention away from the droids, which are grabbing the objectives away from. It is, uh, it's really hard to try to ignore the big hitting aces while trying to take out the drones at the same time. Um, and uh, the, this list can do a lot of work. There's a lot of tools. George did a fantastic job in this run here, uh, losing too crispy in, in the um, in the cut. But uh, congrats to George for. Congrats to George for blocking JJ for the last time. You're done, buddy. Sorry. Anyway, so it's been a fun. Um, next week, I promise we'll have more than just lists. <laughs> next week, we will not just do just lists. Um, we'll, we'll actually, let's cover, we'll cover some different content. Yeah. There is a GSP qualifier we will cover, but it will be a smaller segment. Um, since points haven't changed, the probability is we're going to see um, very similar list that we've already seen. Um, JJ might play in this. We you never know. Like maybe maybe we'll convince him to get up at three a.m. and play in this. We'll see. Yeah, the plan is to play for this one. I, I definitely want to. Uh, I, I've missed out on the other ones, so I definitely want to play this one. Um, what about you? Are you playing? Uh, I don't know. I'll be honest. I don't know. Like, um, I'm in. Um, I'm technically, I don't know how you're going to play because supposedly you're supposed to play um, Sandy on Friday, but I am in Detroit Friday night with the wife. Um, so as long as my wife feels good and is not sick, we will be in Detroit seeing John Mulaney um, on Friday night. Okay. 
Um, so the probability that I want to get up at 3 a.m. and play is probably pretty slim. Like, yes, I would like to play. Honestly, I would like to play, but I like the wife and I have had this plan for like six months. This was like, um, this was like my gift to her from uh, back in uh, February. So like, I literally we've we've held on to these tickets for a while. So, and this is probably my wife's one of my wife's favorite comedians. So, okay, cool. So the probability is pretty low that I'll play, but okay. I'll be rooting for you and your Iman Boba Kanan list that I'm sure you'll probably run. If, if I bring that, if, okay. So what are you going to bring that? You could, is, we already had a conversation <laughs> about not having, not like keeping anything a secret and there's nothing that no, we're no. working on that standard. That is like some top secret, like crazy sauce. No, most likely Boba, Boba Kanan Iman is going to be my list to go. Um, I feel like that has the best chance um, against a lot of different lists in the meta. Although um, my Grievous uh, with Pre Vizsla and the, the Mini Swarm is really, uh, really good as well with objectives. I feel more comfortable with the Fire Sprays. So, yeah. So anyway, so next week we'll be talking uh, about different stuff that's not um, that's not just lists for, for Christ's sake. So we've done that for two weeks. I've had enough of just lists. Um, we will be starting our discussions. We're going to be going back and looking at different scenarios. We're going to be, depending on what happens um, and who we can get on, we'll probably be looking at opening engagement, obstacle placements with each of the scenarios again. Um, based on list types. So that's probably what we'll be looking towards doing. Um, uh, that's that's my hope as long as a bunch of stuff doesn't happen. And uh, I don't know, we get a bunch of weird things happening. But I, I really think opening engagement and, and obstacle placement with the new scenarios and based on your list type is probably a, a beneficial conversation to have again. Um, and that'll kind of be our lead up into, you know, each of the different scenarios and covering those again. So, so I'm pretty sure now that we're past these, we don't have. Ugh, God damn it. In two weeks, October 2nd, we have a bunch of tournaments happening. But other than that, we have one tournament, one tournament, and then October has two free weeks. So we're, we, we need to go back to our scenarios. That's, that was, that was really what we, we liked. Um, that's really what we like. Yeah, Absolutely. All right. Anything else, JJ, before we retire for the night? Uh, if you guys are going out to Cray Cup again in, uh, at the end of September, uh, I will definitely be there. I hope to see a lot of you in person. Uh, just stop by and say hi, and uh, hope we have a great time at Cray Cup. Yep. And if you uh, are coming out in October, October 1st, you can come out to the Michigan GT and hang out with me and some of my local crew, and it'll be a big fun experience lots of really cool prizes no worlds invite on the line but really cool prizes and oh by the way it's extended uh with the band list though no no nothing from the band list can be played so you cannot run a sloan swarm that cannot happen even though um there's a possibility somebody might be running a sloan swarm in our next ncx league not me though because i'm not an empire player i guess so anyway that being said, thank you all so much for having us tonight. We will see you next week, 9 p.m. Eastern time. And if we're lucky, we're going to get Nick from 312 and Pim to finally do their controlling or constructing the Death Star, which we've they've been putting off for two or three weeks, and we'll finally get them on stream, hopefully this week. Um, also, any streams Greg can't stream for the Nickel City League finals will be streamed on our stream if there's stream between um, Tuesday and Thursday. <laughs> or saturday because yeah. i guess yeah. i'm gone i'm gone well I, I might be gone saturday too so i'm definitely gone sunday so jj you should you and sandy should try to reschedule your match um so that i can cover it or G greg can cover it <clears throat> and, and um yeah. anyway with that being said thank you all have a good night and we'll see you next week